friends, welcome or welcome back to Mimi's Mixed Bag. Thank you for stopping by. I'm bringing you my first Christmas project this year. Those of you that have been with me for a long time know that I am very selective on sponsored content. This company reached out to me, I think mainly because I do a lot of parties and, and celebrations and I share on my channel. They are a very successful Amazon store that sell all kinds of catering and party products, paper, disposable products, and things like that. Well, I looked through their store and I saw that they had um, big quantities of those little plastic punch cups. Some of you also may know that I love to share vintage crafts. Not necessarily vintage items, it's just the craft itself is a vintage idea. And I've got a playlist down below. These are crafts that I made 30 plus years ago. Some my mother and I made. Just cute ideas that are timeless and that are fun to create and little gifts to give and things like that. When I found those punch cups on their Amazon store, I immediately thought of the oldie but goodie sparkle ball. It's the cutest Christmas decoration that you can hang outside, hang from your porch, or even hang indoors. And when I saw they had the nine ounce punch cups, I said, I would love to do a video and show you some alternative uses for your party goods. They sent me a box of their punch cups. Let me show you here. It has their store name brand on there, Jolly Chef. And then they sent me a pack of 100. Now they also have clear ones, they have gold ones, they have all kinds of party needs. But I'm gonna be completely honest with you. You have dollar store quality punch cups and you have catering quality punch cups. I have bought those dollar store punch cups before for actual parties and you just barely touch them or someone can barely hold them and they will crack. One thing I will never buy at the dollar store again because I've learned my lesson. Now as far as the price, the dollar store ones are gonna cost you at least seven plus dollars for five packs of them. And these Jolly Chef ones are gonna cost you maybe a dollar or two more and is a huge quality difference. Your sparkle ball will last much longer than the dollar store punch cup ones. I'm gonna take you to my craft table, show you how you can make one of these within an hour and make one for yourself, make one for friends, and they will absolutely love it. I thought I would show you the tutorial out here on this black cloth so you can see the cups really well. All right, to make one sparkle ball, you're gonna need a stapler and some staples. You're gonna need some kind of hanger. It can be wire string. It really doesn't matter what you use to create your hanger. You're going to need 50 9 ounce punch cups. Now they do make different size punch cups, but the 9 ounce seems to be the most popular. All right, with having 50 punch cups, you're going to need a strand of Christmas lights with at least 50 lights so that you'll have a light bulb for every cup. You may end up finding a strand of 60 or a strand of 100 on sale. That's totally fine. The leftover lights, you can stuff up in the ball and no one will ever know. With the 50 cups, you're gonna need to create a little hole in the bottom of all the cups to fit your light bulb in. Now there's a variety of ways you can do that. Some people prefer the, the drill method where they can drill a hole to fit their light bulbs in there snugly. I have found that it really doesn't make that big of a difference and it takes longer because you can only do one cup at a time because you want to reduce the risk of cracking the cup and things like that. This is the harder method. I don't prefer this one. No. If you have a glue gun that has a metal tip, those tips get super hot and it will pierce the bottom of these cups. But here again, you're going to have to do one cup at a time, but it can be done. Now my preferred method is to use a wood burning tool or a soldering iron. These are very inexpensive or you may luck up and know somebody who has one. The good thing about the wood burning tool or the soldering iron you can do three cups at a time just touch your point on there and a matter of seconds it will pierce through all three cups and as soon as the hole goes through i separate the cups so they don't harden back together and then in another couple seconds you can restack them as soon as they cool off but that is definitely the quickest way to get a big enough hole for your light bulbs the the sparkle ball is created in two halves. So I'm going to clear all this out and show you how to make the first row. All right, to get started, you're going to take 12 of your cups and lay them on their side into a circle. Where the cups touch, that's where you're going to staple your cups together. 
keep the cups on their side when you're stapling so your first ring will be nice and flat. Uh, this is what I mean by nice and flat. All the cups are attached, but as we add more cups, they will become more stable. Now we're ready for row two. For row two, it's going to take nine cups, and we're going to put it in between each cup, and you're going to put at least one staple to the bottom row, and then you're going to staple it to its neighbor all the way around. So we'll have two rows of cups. All right, our second row has gotten more stable. If you feel a little loose spot that needs a staple, add a staple. All right, now for the third row, it's going to take four cups. I'll just staple four cups together. I will fit them in that little existing hole. And it really becomes stable. There's, there's no chance of the cups coming apart. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing to create the other half of my ball. A row of 12, a row of 9, and the third row of 4. I just got them turned over so that I can work on the inside of the ball. Alright, now for the lights, here's a couple tips. Depending on your amount of lights, take half of your lights and bundle one half up so that you know that's for the second half. So that way I don't have to count lights and I know that I've got enough equal on each side. Now it depends on your lights. Uh, mine have a male and female end to it, so I'm going to take my female end and I'm going to lay it between two cups. I want to just make sure that this end of the light is accessible in case I need it for wherever I decide to hang it. I don't want to bury this in the inside of my ball. So I'm going to lay it like that and then I'm just going to stick one light bulb in the bottom of every cup. All right, I've got both halves stuffed with the lights, and this is where you want to do a little inspection and make sure you've got one light bulb in each cup because you can easily miss one because once you staple it together, there's really no unstapling it without tearing your ball up. Just make sure that your plug is outside of your ball because that's really important. Lift the other half to where it fits properly like this, and you're going to staple the two halves together. You'll find your center part, your little uh, equator, as I call it. I'm going to staple it all the way around, put as many staples as you feel is necessary to make it secure. Now here's where I like to put my hanger is where my plug-in is. Because when I hang my ball, I don't want my cord hanging from the bottom of the ball. I'd rather it be plugged in from the top. You'll see what I'm talking about when I get it hung up. So however you put your holes in your cups, you need to go ahead and, and find a way to make a little hole so you can attach wire string or your metal ring or whatever you use for your hanger. And once I get my hanger attached, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, I took my bug zapper down off my back porch because I had the perfect setup. I already had a hook and an extension cord where I needed it. So I'm going to let the sun go down here in a few hours and show you how beautiful this sparkle ball is. It's not quite dark yet, but it's close enough and my back porch is dark enough where it's really showing my sparkle ball. Filming LED lighting, it distorts the color a little bit, but my Christmas lights are primary colors. Royal blue, green, red, and yellow, but the, it sure looks pastel on my camera. I encourage you to do this fun project. You can make one in less than an hour. They are beautiful in your yard your porch, or even the campground. I've seen people buy white strand Christmas lights and use the clear cups for wedding decor. They are just really eye-catching and you can see them from so far away. So be sure and check out the Amazon Jolly Chef link below to get your cups and I'll be back in a couple weeks. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.